there was a grand mask at Greenwich Palace, um, which is a sort of a ceremonial event, so it would be a, a dance. Um, Anne was cast as one of the seven, seven ladies playing the seven virtues. Um, appropriately enough, as it turned out, she played Perseverance. The ladies danced in a mock castle. Um, they then defended it from a group of masked knights. Um, eventually they came down and danced with the gentlemen and the king was unmasked to be one of the, the knights. So that's the first time that we have Anne and Henry definitely in the same room together. It was noticed that a young man was beginning to spend more and more time with her. This was Henry Percy, who was quite a significant figure. He was the heir to the Earl of Northumberland, so far out of Anne's league status-wise. There were rumours of a secret engagement between the couple. This came to the king's ears and the king ordered Wolsey to break off the match. Percy's father was summoned from the north and spirited him home where he was married off immediately and Anne was sent home to Hever Castle in disgrace. So she comes back to Hever Castle and then she and the king are in communication, aren't they? That's right. So there are 17 love letters written by Henry VIII that survive in the Vatican archives. They're fascinating. They show Henry VIII in love. Um, he would often, at the bottom of the letter, have their initials entwined and he would draw a little heart around them. It all came to a head at her coronation where her banners and Henry's banners said H and A for Henry and Anne and the crowd were heard shouting ha ha, pointing out the banners that she was hated. The end began for Anne in January 1536. Catherine of Aragon died, um, which Henry and Anne celebrated by wearing yellow. On the day of Catherine's funeral, Anne miscarried a son.